All right, it's me, Justin, and uh, today I'm gonna to be doing a presentation on the universality of business and organization. On the agenda for today, we're gonna to be uh, doing an icebreaker, which is a brief intro, a simple definition of business on a universal level, some examples of business, like, like lots of examples of business in general, and I also made in a makeshift alphabet using a bunch of business terms and terminology. I also uh, did a did a uh, a brief uh, essay, you could say, on the on the history of business, on uh, what the potential of business can be. I'm also doing a review of my own business project. It is known as the Wonderful World of Charlie and His Friend. It's been uh, active since 2015, and uh, yeah, we're still set on succeeding and working hard, obviously. And uh, I also have a very simple business activity in which we, will, which involves us discussing our our own uh, visions and ideas on business. We'll get to that in a moment. Breaking the ice. Business has a wide variety of formal and informal definitions in the universe including simple actions or dialogue, conversations, events, coalitions or alliances, operations, trades, criticism, groups or teams or councils, whatever teams there are, uh, concerns, activity, practicing or preparing for something particular, commerce, professions or occupations, and a lot more. Business would typically describe a group of people, usually with fancy attire and standards, getting together in an office or a store and talking something along the lines of operation, development, management, finances, sales, resources, etc. But the surprising reality is that business has an even more vast variety of definitions than you can even begin to imagine. There are numerous, potentially infinite, infinite ways that business works in general. Business comes in many shapes, forms, sizes, organizations, incorporations, ways, beliefs, and a lot more. There are potentially infinite examples of business. A mere fraction of examples of business in general includes a store selling produce or meat or bread, a manager running a, a motel or a hotel or a hostel full of guests and staff to, uh, you know, help manage and regulate affairs for all guests alike. It can be a uh, typical office with a systematic mode of staff and uh, rules and regulations. It, business can also include an amusement park with a bus or ride that are constantly maintenanced and regulated to ensure safety and efficiency for the riders. Another example could be a restaurant or a cafe Ran by, a, ran by a, an efficient, high energy team that constantly cooks, cleans, tends to customers and equipment, helps promote advertisement or other incentives to uh, buy from the particular store or even to get a job there. Another, uh, another in, informal example of business can also include a household ran by a family that may Maintains rules, constantly works to maintain a clean, organized residence, maintain order, organize objects and furniture, and other people, pets, collections, and other knickknacks. Of course, the size of the household uh, varies as they can range from something as small as a studio apartment or, or just a simple set to sleep and uh, eat and whatnot. It can be something as giant as a palace or a mansion that can have the that can have a variety of their own staff, which that also falls under business in uh, general. And uh, not to mention a uh, household or other resident buildings, whatever you choose to call them, like houses, apartments, whatever. You can host a variety of residents, even pets. Some even most businesses of their own, whether on an informal level or done formally with like a per with the likes of a permit and whatnot. Another 
another another formal example could include a, a museum that preserves and displays relics and works of art to all tourists that can be able to gather to see. Most museums even implement security and as to, well, you know, preserve these these works of art as they're considered very valuable and uh, priceless. Again, it, business can also include a school that can educate hundreds, even thousands of students and host dozens or even hundreds of staff members. It can also include like offices, cafeterias, security departments. Sometimes schools collaborate with uh, third party organizations, just like a, a, a typical business would. It, it can also include like a, a parking lot converted to the likes of a car dealership to advertise and to sell cars that are obviously mass producing factories. It can also include a police force or agency that maintains and enforces order to keep citizens safe, sometimes taking a secretive or extreme measures to, uh, to uh, keep their jurisdiction in check. Uh, it can also include a, a musician writing and recording music to implement into albums and perform live at concerts and shows. They can be able to uh, strategize with their management, work with other artists. They can also include an artist painting portraits or uh, making sculptures, sometimes even doing photography. Uh, it can also it can also include like a country or a nation that can make its own, their own laws, constitutions, build their own cities or towns, elect their own officials and uh, administrators, sometimes even conducting trade or sometimes they work with other countries. Another, another rather uh, fantastic example of business could be a, a kingdom where villages and towns can be built businesses are built and moderated, they can, they can maintain a proper guard and uh, order. And, uh, some, and usually kingdoms would be passed down from family families, famous business. Sometimes uh, businesses pass from parent to child, I guess, um, I guess a uh, uncle or aunt to nephew or niece and whatnot. It can also include a doctor's office that uh, takes care of a wide variety of patients and uh, constantly has to maintain uh, supplies in a certain fashion or manner. There are several numerous examples of uh, business on both formal and informal levels. All right, now we're moving on to the main part, which is the ABC's business. There are a lot more examples of informal and informal business than all the humans combined on this earth can imagine or even fantasize on an hourly basis, so much that it cannot all be fitting onto this presentation. We shall move on. I need to make sure the alphabet that has 26 unique business terms representing the letters of the modern alphabet. A is for awareness. In business, awareness needs to be able to recognize as much as possible. From a formal or informal business structure to the pros and cons and advantages and flaws, to the capabilities and flaws of each of your co workers, to your own flaws. Being as aware as possible can keep you vigilant and uh, in vulnerable as possible in your business. Because you need as much awareness as possible when it comes to even small details and aspects. The more aware you are, the more, sh the more sharp and cunning you can be in your goal and how to and tend to be able to attain them in, a, in an efficient manner. The less aware you are, the less likely you will be able to properly manage and run your business. You can, you can uh, lose track of what's going on, you can even get taken advantage of. Be aware of everything surrounding you in the world of business. Business is a constantly changing and disrupting concept in the world for all the universal definitions just as well. Be aware of your plans. Be aware of your reasons. Be aware of your vision. Be aware of your goals. Be aware of anything. If you are not aware, you cannot even know what you are doing in business and can easily be defeated or taken advantage of, leading to certain failure. B is for balance. Balance 
is an important factor in business. People have many different perspectives of uh, balance in life and in business. Balance would typically describe an even contract between two opposing things. That's what I'm referring to, what Carl said, or changing events. An ideal form of balance would usually describe things being all good with no bad sense, bad things even existing. All things good and bad happen in this world for a reason. As much as it would be impossible to completely rid the world of good, it is impossible to rid the world of bad as well. That's why you gotta be willing to recognize the good in others despite their bad flaws. That is how you stay strong in those that otherwise wouldn't be worth their flaws. And that is how you maintain a good universal balance, which is much good as possible and as little bad as possible, with a variety of neutral or uh, or merged or, or mixed morality antics as well. Depends on how people perceive it, of course. C is for creation. With an important concept of balance in business discussed, let it be known that one of the highest things you can do in business is create. Practically, practically create something out of nothing, even if be expanded towards everything. Sadly, business has the power to destroy as well, even when they don't realize it. Either way, business has the power to combat destruction with creation and vice versa. It is great responsibility upon the masters of business to be able to facilitate creation. And when the responsibilities associated with creation and management and maintenance are neglected even in the slightest, damages, even small ones, can start to build up that could potentially lead to the can start to build up that could potentially lead to the destruction of the business. One of the worst outcomes a human can suffer in a constantly changing world. Everybody has the power to create, even things that are beyond a typical imagination or potential. With business, potential can be created, discovered, even built upon. D is for determination. Determination is more complex and hardcore than one can easily imagine. When it comes to any sort of determination, even in business, you must be devoted. You must be able to make sacrifices. You must be dedicated to the task that, or tasks ahead of you. You must be turbulent and kill yourself based off of your experience and passion. You must have ambition, charisma, a heightened sense of survival for others and yourself. You must build up skills over months, years, even decades if necessary. You must go through as many experiences and scenarios as possible in order to realize them all completely for all little values and lessons they hold, whether they are good or bad. Having as, much, having as much experience as possible, even if it's not remotely related to the business tasks, can help you indefinitely in your endeavors and ambitions, making you more sharp skilled and more aware of things and more eager to attain your goals the most human and compassionate way possible. You, you must make as many good and bad memories as possible. You must as, learn as much as possible. Hey, Justin, can you get about halfway? We'll take a break, okay? All right, sounds good. Yeah. Uh -huh. E is for exercise. With, a, a uni with an important term discussed, let's move on. There is a large universal variety of mental, physical, emotional, verbal, and uh, Psychological exercise on any muscle, tissue, organ, etc. in the body, making you more sharper and stronger in that particular aspect. As much as you should work out regularly to improve your muscles and body, you must work out your work out your mind as well. There come so many ways to being able to train yourself or others constantly, even when at a full potential. Exercise means keeping yourself sharp. So as your mind and body does not deteriorate or spoil one's health, there are a variety of mental exercises to boost brain power. As unique it is to say this, there is meditation, coordination exercises, constant tests, riddles, quizzes, trivia, memorization, etc. And also, F is for family. Family would usually describe those that are close, <coughs> close in genetic relation to you. The reality is that we are all family on this earth, and uh, we can all be able to get along with friends as easily as it is able to not get along with the immediate family. All humans, especially those that have up for the sake of business, share a common ancestor at some point in human history, making us all like distant relatives that are able to 
shift amongst each other systematically when it comes to constantly changing environments and customs. Like when you move to a new city or a new state or a new country. Yeah, constantly changing environments and customs. It is, especially for this reason, that an ohana or an everyone's family approach on being able to be warm and welcoming and genuine with those you work with is proven to efficiently facilitate teamwork and synergy. The concept of ohana, which is a, which is a, originally a Hawaiian term, just, just, the concept of Ohana describes making family out of everybody around you and not forgetting each other, even in the worst of outcomes. It also greatly improves tolerance and resolution amongst each other as well as to become stronger and stronger in the infinite world of business. Humanity is technically one giant family, making us all royalty, at least in a higher light. G is for globalization. Globalization is the, is the practice of expanding business into new territories and environments. Missionizing the discovery of new cultures that can be able to implement said business in their perspective and find ways to join the main cohorts in the overall business operations and goals. Globalization holds parallel events to the likes of pilgrims discovering new lands with undiscovered tribes of people and utilizing and learning each other's customs and cultures to be able to form new understanding between said cultures, especially those that can be uh, beneficial to the business that's trying to expand. To globalize, we need to expand this to as high a potential as possible in business and business customs that can be introduced to uh, new groups of people and used to attain goals of success. When people share their own perspectives of customs according to their beliefs, and there are some of us that want to be able to learn simply from the experiences itself and then open a new world of opportunities for innovation and overall success. H is for humanity. Humanity is a very complex concept that we all as humans share. Other animals have their own concepts parallel to humanity such as their own sentience and well-being, their own feelings and impulses, their own needs to survive and live. We all see the world differently from one another. No matter how much the same we are, we humans are merely one species on this planet and, and in this universe. It does not matter how intelligent or civilized we are. We humans are naive to theorize <laughs> the state of our existence off of a certain uniqueness even resorting to otherwise outrageous theories about uh, how we came to exist. The harsh reality is humans are not special. All animals can work amongst each other to an extent. We all can get along to some extent when, uh, when this sort of civilization is trained into us. All humans share over 99.9% .9 of their DNA with each other. That I'm basically referring to all of us in this room, for example with the remaining 0.1% gapping the differences in all of us. We all have a common human ancestor and even share the same evolutionary ancestors as the likes of bears, cows, dogs, and more. We share approximately 98% of our DNA with the likes of chimpanzees. We share 70 to 80% of our DNA with all other animals on this earth and approximately 50 to 60% of our DNA with plants. All creatures can be able to work together in harmony when there comes a mutually agreeable will amongst all instead of, well, forced labor and enslavement needed to domesticate said animal to nothing but uh, human will. A lot of times it can lead to potentially abusive situations that an animal would otherwise not want to be in. So when you use an animal for work per se, like, the animal's gotta be willing to do it, like be able to trust the humans enough to be willing to perform that task. Otherwise, otherwise that's nothing better than enslavement. Uh, the reason humanity is important in business because businesses are ran by humans and being able to embrace the creatures we are is the best way to 
utilize ourselves and our potential in the world of business. I is for innovation. Innovation is infinite. Innovation is constantly changing and adapting. Innovation comes slowly and innovation comes right out of the blue. Most businesses innovate all the time, lest they fail and end up potentially in the worst of situations. Innovation is all about coming up with more efficient and effective ideas to improve things, as there is always room for improvement, no matter how high of a potential you are. Innovation is not always linked through. Yeah. Banks are not too fond of cryptocurrencies. Taxis are not too fond of modern transportation services and companies such as Uber or Lyft. Schools are not too fond of online learning. Well, except for bad cases such as the COVID-19 pandemic. Not all restaurants are too fond of uh, delivery services, despite many cafes and restaurants usual, util, uh, despite many cafes and restaurants u utilizing third-party delivery services such as Postmates or DoorDash or Uber Eats. Investments. Investment firms are not too fond of online investing because, like, it's like it's easier to invest. You can like there's a there's a a less minimum amount that you would have to invest in order to uh, gain traction of it. Like a typical investment firm would want like thousands of dollars, while on a simple simple finance related apps like Cash App, you can be able to invest as little as like one dollar into something and uh, be able to like uh, invest more over time to be able to uh, gain the traction and dividends you want. J is for justice. Justice is important in business in not just making said businesses compatible with the laws of the jurisdiction they operate at, but creating pr practically your own system of laws that is that are as just as fair as possible. Justice does not come just from relying on a single centralized code of law, but also going by your own ethics and morals. As bothersome as this may sound, relying on especially laws that are more flawed and uh, frivolous can be potentially detrimental for business. That is why relying on the likes of our government and government agencies is not always the best solution in business, as allowing yourself to have everybody and everything in said business submits itself to the will and image of higher powers instead of your own free spirit and the justice you, you personally pursue in your own perspective and terms can be dam damaging to the business and not to mention can be just borderline madness sometimes because then you have to submit yourself to bureaucracies which can only hinder the flow of business so yeah a lot of times when you uh, when you like work on the the regulations of of business like like sometimes you gotta be able to rely on your own perspective of of law and justice and whatnot because some flaws I mean some laws can be uh, flawed and just one simple mistake can uh, put you in a very bad situation. I and just enough why I used to uh, take law back at Ernest McBride High School, very awesome program. And just enough why I'm on uh, slide fifteen of a. Uh, 45, so we're about a third of the way through. Okay, let me see. Uh, being able to rely on ethics to create your own systems of law in business and even allowing said systems to be flexible and adaptable enough to be in compliance with any code of laws in any country or the jurisdiction, at least on your terms, to keep everybody satisfied while uh, providing their own world of uh, rules and laws for those that work with the business. K is for knowledge. As Isaac Newton once said, what we know is a drop, what we don't know is an ocean. This means that there is so much to be taught to us over and over again that all of us combined can be able to even begin to imagine. Knowledge is a formidable weapon in business. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is wisdom. Knowledge knows no bounds, truly. Knowledge can be used for both good and bad. things. Knowledge can be learned at any time of the day and at any place and taught by any human or even another animal. Some embrace high knowledge while others could care less about their role in the world. There is even knowledge lost to history that could especially be useful to us. Modern humans first emerged about around 200,000 years ago, while record keeping did not become a thing until approximately 6,000 years ago, meaning, meaning that expectantly, 
90% of human history is still considered lost, including lost peoples, lost cultures, lost civilizations, lost inventions, lost stories, lost legends, lost heroes, lost aspirations and ambitions. There's, there's a lot that is lost that is waiting to be found, obviously. Knowledge is everything is because it is how we perceive things. We all have our own perspectives of knowledge and how we choose to utilize it, utilize it accordingly. Ink. L is for leisure. Now that another important term is out of the way, let us move on. Do not go about taking responsibilities and assuming obligations in business. Find leisure and passion in, this, in business. When you are able to do something at your own will, that you can get a sense of fantastic satisfaction and reward from doing rather than just simply something you do to maintain a decent living. Instead, make a living out of business. Find your pleasures running your business. Some businesses and companies even have luxury tactics of, or benefits as incentives for employees that work there. Some people find pleasure in running kingdoms and empires in old times, and the same goes for people running businesses. You can make friends with your staff and form genuine relationships with them. You can literally enjoy business as if it was near a child's play, almost like it, almost like you're a kid again and you're, and you're playing at the park and you're imagining pretty much anything possible. Like make this, make running a business fun for you and those that have the fortune of being able to work with you in business. M is for uh, marketing. Marketing is a major factor. How else are products and services supposed to be distributed and sold across the world? There has to be merchants and representatives that are easy to communicate when it comes to sales and distributions and the appropriate quality and quantity, people that can conduct business on behest of the company and represent the company. Many modern day entrepreneurs are able to recruit efficient teams while others struggle to even find somebody to, recruit, to potentially recruit. Marketing can be done online, do a contract <laughs> transaction, or done the old-fashioned way face-to-face. -face. Marketing comes with many universal strategies, especially <coughs> things like advertisements and endorsements and manufacturing and shipping, and a lot of uh, variety of tactics and uh, set marketing strategies need to focus on. And it is for networking. <coughs> Networking is way more complex and beneficial than you think. Through networking, you can make a variety of allies, friends, partners, etc. Did you know that networking can get you much farther than a life of a college degree can with the right people and resources? Networking requires a lot of communication and trust. Networking involves a lot of, presumably, one chance opportunities that wouldn't usually be presented a second time. You can be able to network with anybody with the proper moderation and consent. Networking requires a lot of good skills, such as negotiation, strategizing, and typically knowing a lot about business in general, and not to mention being respectively wise or smart with business actually has to show the other people that you know what you're talking, talking about. O is for operation. Like business itself, operation comes in infinite ways, such as selling a certain product, or performing a surgery, or writing a book, or designing a video game. Operation is key in business. Business needs function. Trillions of cells function amongst themselves and make each other and in each other to make up the human body. A lot of groups of people are needed to keep a business functioning and operating. Otherwise, the business can be weak and can potentially die out. Operations can be planned days, weeks, months, to even years to decades in advance. Any business owner, administrator, or manager, or other high-ranking employee can be able to initiate and moderate an operation. Operations are universal in nature and can take many forms and levels. P is for philosophy. Philosophy defines the study of things around you, such as the studies of the world to studies of various administration and management strategies. Philosophy is just as important to business as it was in the empires and kingdoms of ancient times. Philosophers and those that follow philosophy are 
typically more aware of the surroundings and are better learners and planners than those that take a sim more similar approach on things. There are so many types of philosophy and even meta-philosophy, the philosophical branch of study that focuses on philosophy itself. Then there's meta-meta-philosophy, the philosophical branch of study that focuses on the philosophical study of philosophy itself. Philosophy comes in many shapes and sizes. Q is for quest. Quests, unlike the fundamental tasks that you did, that you did, that you get to do in video games or seen TV shows that often involve the protagonist of them being rewarded with something fantastic or even lavish, are just a very prevalent thing in real life business as well. You discover things, you research things, you brainstorm things, you discuss things, you socialize with fellow colleagues or comrades, kind of like how you have to talk to people in a video game or people exchange dialogue in a, like a TV show or a book or just a real life conversation in general. I'm not just referring about something that can be fantasized. You, uh, you socialize with fellow colleagues or comrades, you work with others, you make goals, you work towards goals, you accomplish goals. Quests in business are just as real. These quests can, you can do alone or with a partner or multiple partners or a small or large team. Being able to carry out said quest would still involve a lot of deliberation on how everything is going to work, so to speak, but the only similar thing is that you can still be rewarded and benefit at the end or at some significant milestone in the quest. R is for reason. Reason and the ability to reason with others is very important in business because it's the only tactics that, that allow a plan to and idea to make sense in the first place. It does not matter whether your plans and ideas are simple or even very complicated or outrageous. You need reason to back up the complexity of your ideas. Otherwise, they will not make sense and it won't really work as intended. Reason allows others to see the motivations and perspective of your ideas so they can be able to make sense of said ideas themselves and thus be able to contribute towards some corporation in business, or at least pitching your own perceivable ideas to propose a more agreeable idea with its own sets of reasons does not matter how complex your ideas are if reason lacks. S is for sediment, with a very important term out the way, let us move on. Sediment is the ability to explore outside of your comfort zone. They can include being able to think stuff like you normally wouldn't, or being able to do things that you normally wouldn't be able to do. Being able to learn new abilities you never knew before. A sentimental personality can uh, can strengthen one's capabilities in life and be able to set oneself on a good path. Sentiment is strength, especially in the world of business. With sentiment comes thinking out of the box, always doing something new or different than unconventional needs. Sentiment, in, sentiment strengthens the mind, the heart, and the spirit. Sentiment involves learning new and more powerful knowledge as I can be able to be utilized in the world of business and strategy, leading to the likelihood of success. T is for time. With another important term out the way, let us move on. Time is a constantly moving concept. Time can move forward. Time can be interpreted from different perspectives. Time can be utilized. Time can be dilated based on the forces acting upon you and the planet that gravity grounds you on, and the height away from the center of the Earth's gravity. Time can be recorded, with, especially with sound and light. Perhaps in the future, we can be able to travel between whatever past, present, and future time era we want with the proper equipment and resources, the reason time is important to business because you have only but a naturally limited amount of time to be able to do tasks. Time is used to set deadlines for certain objectives and goals, and time is more valuable than money. Lost money you can be able to recover any time. Lost time cannot be taken, in bit, taken back, no matter how much you try to do to make up for it. And this is this this is what I uh, consider the most important term of it all. Term of it all, U is for universality. Now that we got another important term out of the way, let's move on to the core of this presentation. Universality is the study of relatively anything in general. Universality allows you to easily compare one tactic to another, completely unrelated tactic, at least by informal methods of philosophy. 
such as an analogy, which allows you to compare two separate things to be able to discover parallel tactics to implement into your business in a more mind-blowing and genius manner. As a wise man once said, all things are related. This simple four-letter phrase epitomizes the absolute definition of universality. This means that, generally, the term universality means the study of all things, period. Universality is a way bigger word that is not taken too lightly by modern society, and being able to implement practically anything and everything in a business makes opportunities for business more infinite and flexible as to better adapt to pretty much anything, even at more outrageous ideas or costs. For example, McDonald's can easily create space rockets of the future with the right amount of money and resources, or O'Reilly Auto Parts can have a stand where they make tacos for the store customers. Kind of like how Ikea has those meatballs and hot dogs. And the possibilities are endless. It doesn't matter how you look at it, possibilities are endless. V is for versatility. With the most important term out of the way, let's move on. Versatility is the ability for business to be flexible and adaptable as to better adapt to the concept of change itself. As compared to universality itself, as seen by universal tactics of business, opportunities for change and adaptability are potentially infinite and limitless. When a business or organization undergoes change, all employees and employees must obtain the business must have a level of versatility in part with that general organization. When a company is unable to adapt to change, however, then that is then that can pose a huge threat to the to the business and the businesses unable to catch up with the majority of their competitors and allies and the cutthroat world of business. W is for wisdom. Also considering the infinite concept of universality, wisdom is a higher level and mode of discipline. Especially that of your inner spirit can be able to learn and maintain in life. One of these modes of discipline that coincides with deeper wisdom happens to be self-discipline, the highest level of discipline that is not commonly and easily taught to us at a young age. True discipline involves little to no feelings and emotion, and most reactions are done out of wisdom instead of feelings. That allows people to be stronger and more tolerant to those around you. There are many ways one can adapt to wisdom, although it does not set in right away. And usually it takes time to be fully realized by those learning said wisdom and being able to pass it down to future generations. Wisdom is important in business because it allows you to be more wise with those you work with and be able to teach them things that you may have not learned at a younger time. X is for Xenial. I'm pretty sure some of you may have never even heard this word before. What's another majorly important term out the way? Let us learn a rare, a rare word. To be zenial is to be uh, warm and uh, welcoming and uh, willing to work with the likes of strangers or those hosted by someone as a guest that's not of their original background or place. Many organizations are skeptical in planning just about any but you work with them due to liability and security reasons. But if you are more polite and genuine with those that operate with a business outside of what they are accustomed to, then you can be able to earn more respect and even more, earn more people contributing towards your business than those who are more hostile to what they consider outsiders or strangers. And this is where it, things get really interesting. Y is for yin yang. The yin yang, an ancient, ancient, an ancient Chinese symbol and icon representing harmony and higher balance, is one philosophical concept when it comes to it, especially examining the morality of each aspect of business. The white or yin part of the symbol represents good and most usually good in purity, while the black or yang part of the symbol represents black and corruption. The black circle in the yin part of the yin yang represents the bad in the good, such as the part of good deeds that people may not like or approve of, or better exemplifying the simple phrase, good deeds never go unpunished. <coughs> The white circle in the yang part of the yin yang represents the good and the bad, such as uh, people sometimes being des desperate or forced or coerced to do something against their morals or legality in order to uh, to do something good or to be heroic or have a good cause in reason, and usually 
common people would perceive that as bad, even though like you felt like you had good reason to uh, do what you needed to do. Like I said, it all depends on uh, the perspective. The edges bordering the two color shades represent a purely neutral side of things, not good nor bad, just simply in between, commonly known as a gray area in modern times. For things to be determined as good or bad or anywhere between the two simple sides, all comes down to the odds perceived by people, especially in business. Uh, no big deal. Just, uh, just, uh, yeah. Yeah, if, if, if everyone, if people are tired, I completely understand. Like, I, I only got, I only got uh, two hours of sleep last night because I stayed up late working on this presentation. Well, it was probably worth it in the end, man. Mm-hmm. For things to be determined as good as or bad or anywhere between the two single sides, it all comes down to how it's perceived by people, especially in business. Z and uh, the last letter, Z, is for Zen. Zen is like a school or class of inner peace that can especially be very useful in business because it allows uh, one to be more calm and focused and peaceful with the task at hand. When you are zen out, per se, you are typically in a state of a very vibrant calm that can allow one to have more clarity and free will when thinking for the sake of business. Being able to easily exalt one's plane of thinking towards a higher ambition or goal with an almost complete lack of ego that could hinder you from getting business done. Like being able to uh, be at a higher state of, of thinking is a, a concept very explored in modern times. Like there's this one rapper that even came up with a word for a, a higher state or a plane of thinking. The word is called Gekyum, G-E-K-Y-U-M-E. Gekyum, I've heard of that. Yeah. Yeah, it, the definition of that means a higher state or plane of thinking, or a higher universe, however it is described, like a higher state of thinking. Okay. Being able to easily exalt one's plane of thinking towards a higher ambition or goal with an almost complete lack of ego that can hinder you from getting business done. Being able to remain peaceful and tolerant with others allows you to be strengthen mentally and emotionally and can allow for better relationship amongst teammates and meditation and uh, colleagues there are zen related exercises such as yoga and meditation zen is is important in business because it promotes peace and calmness amongst those that work towards a common goal all right now that we're done with the all right all right so uh my name is justin larue thank you for uh all coming back and uh, here is the second part of my presentation. I, for, I first reviewed a, a simple universal definition of business, provided a lot of uh, examples for this. This is even a, had a makeshift alphabet of uh, really unique business terms. Now I'm going to be discussing the history of business as a uh, human business has evolved with uh, various kind, various uh, accounts of human history. So we're going to start with with ancient prehistory, when uh, modern humans first came on the scene. Humans started off as simple as creatures, mostly using sticks and stones for uh, useful tools. What they did with those sticks and stones that led them to the discovery of many other useful things, such as uh, firing tools and building and farming, fell under a very uh, simple circumstance of business for uh, that uh, early humans were capable of. And it, even before humans existed, animals conducted business of their own, such as leading packs or finding shelters or hunting food. Humans may have ate only plants in the beginning, but ended up discovering the benefits of meat to the human diet, such as uh, vitamin B12, or carnets that efficiently improve the digestive system. Uh, yeah, so when they discovered uh, how to hunt meat and whatnot, they, uh, that's when humans became uh, the typically omnivorous species that we know today. Stuff as simple as collecting berries or nuts or hunting for meat or fish is considered uh, 
business for uh, people with syphilis or early cavemen. Then, uh, human, as humans began utilizing tools and organization more, they, they had less of uh, finding shelters in trees and caves and even began to build like huts and tents and whatnot. As humans began discovering how to build shelters, people started building villages or would move tents from one place to another nomadically. Whether early humans set up residence, they would conduct all sorts of personal or professional business, such as caring for themselves and others and their families, and cooking food or uh, making tools, bartering with, with fellow humans around them, hunting and gathering food, building more huts, as a vi etc. As villages grew to towns and towns into cities, humans became more and more efficient in otherwise manual tasks, whether strategically in numbers or with, uh, with uh, earlier, early technology. Some technology that existed back in ancient times were more advanced than us today, such as the uh, like ancient civilizations, such as ancient Egypt and the ancient Parthians you knew about uh, electricity. The Parthians had this like a, uh, this is what this like a, uh, this, this a uh, clay jar that had this uh, rod that is uh, in it, which is, which also has like a, a citric acid in it, such as like a orange or a lemon juice to help build an electrical current. Like, they were pretty good with electricity even before uh, Jesus was born. Humans learned to domesticate animals for either work or meat instead of the usual hunting method, which drove many ironically historical, I, which drove many iconically historical animals to extinction. Humans also learned to domesticate fire and uh, make tools out of iron or stone. Uh, as the likes of the Romans and Greek became more ambitious with conquering land around them, also considering conduct, considered conducting business because blacksmiths had to make swords and other weapons and gear for soldiers, like arrows and armor and shields. Soldiers had to uh, had to prepare and store food, set up shelter, meet with each other, strategize their war methods as, as effectively as possible. Not to mention others took even more vulnerable risks and send uh, messages back and forth between uh, collaborating or opposing uh, kingdoms or empires. As the Roman, Roman Republic grew and was converted into an autocratic empire that conquered everywhere around the Mediterranean Sea, more business was done. Emperors would, the emperors would constantly have exalted business done, such as communicating with high figures throughout the empire, conducting constructions of temples and statues dedicated to in their honor or in the honor of uh, various gods that they have worshipped throughout these empires, planning war and trade strategies, and uh, much more to keep their empires regulated. As the Roman Empire became too big and the business became too overwhelming for the citizens to handle, the empire weak was weakened, and, uh, which was a factor in the... Which, in a, uh, and, uh, uh, sorry about the eyes. The empire, uh, the Roman Empire weakened and fell to a series of invasions by lesser civilized barbarians and no less or better. And that's how the Roman Empire fell. All right. After the Roman Empire fell, it was divided into several kingdoms, such as uh, Spain, France, Britain, uh, Scotland, etc. Yeah, after the Roman Empire fell, it was divided into several kingdoms that either formed alliances or fought each other for control over what remained of the ancient empire of Rome, which ruled most of the Europe and uh, parts of Africa and Asia. These kingdoms handled business of their own, such as appointing generals or priests or other people of designated or exalted status to serve the royal family during the kings and queens and <clears throat> other rising emperors and politicians at the time. Much simpler forms of Business and tradition were prevalent due to the aftermath of the fall of the Roman Empire, sending the majority of humanity into a scientific and intellectual regression, which we now know as the Dark Ages. And it took, and it took a while for uh, the concept of innovation amongst humans to be fully revitalized after the 
of the Roman Empire and the, the decline in the advanceable technology or knowledge. As, civil, as civilization slowly began rediscovering and uh, reinventing and rebuilding themselves from the Dark Ages, humanity was sent to a somewhat constant, constant and turbulent cycle of innovation where some new thing was some new thing was invented during the course of uh, somebody's life and would continue on to this day. Humans bettered themselves as, at the business of trade, war, exploration, religious expansion, such as, such as the timely for stream Christian movements dedicated to the teachings of Yeshua, formerly known as Jesus Christ, that led to suppress, suppressive actions being taken advan against advanced knowledge, such as mislabeling the, even the brightest minds of the likes of heretics and witches, and having them all exterminated or executed, whatever term you use. It was very sad indeed. Like, some many people were like, bright-minded and wanted nothing other to help others and then these authorities would think oh this this higher knowledge is evil we need to get rid of that person because we prefer things to be simple and docile and uh and uh so, and even such corrupt practices of uh conspiring against the brightest minds still goes on today things only got brighter and brighter for humanity and human business regardless as, innovation, as uh, innovations in art, science, philosophy, etc. were booming during the Renaissance and early modern ages, so did human civilization and business in general. A man named Christopher Columbus conducted business with a crew of poor pe for people set to sail by order of the King of Spain, intending to find an easier trade route by sea to India. He and his crew unknowingly arrived in what is now Florida, believing that Yet they had finally reached India after months and crossed a milestone of their uh, their business plan, per se, their business orders. He and his caliber, Christopher Columbus and his crew were naive. They didn't, they didn't know that um, North America and South America existed. They thought the likes of Europe and Africa and Asia were the only land masses on this earth. They only thought of the earth as a, a third or two thirds of the size that it, as it actually is. He and his crew naive. They were naive. They referred to the Native Americans they encountered as Indians, mistaking them for the people they intended to trade with. Columbus and his men imminently discovered that they were in a completely new world in what is now America, and that they were nowhere near India. Although that realization made Columbus more ambitious as it came to exploring and conquering this this so-called new world. Although uh, this time, this time Columbus was hell bent that the new lands could be conquered in the name of their prospective kingdoms and in the name of the beliefs of Jesus, which was uh, the primary mode of the uh, teachings in uh, medieval and early modern times. They discovered many business opportunities and completely took advantage of it, either displacing Native Americans or mercilessly killing them in a very maniacal and genocidal fashion. Once again, very very sad all for the business of pilgrims to be able to uh, discover new worlds and discover new tactics. Of course, this was during a time when humans were too naive to know that all humans have a common ancestor. Of course, Columbus and his men were able to reach India at time, but not without a bunch of reckless decisions along the way, made out of pure stupidity, in yes. my opinion. That it's for reasons like this that uh, Columbus is not so easily idolized nowadays as he was like decades or centuries ago because a lot of now we're he, we are mourning for the native american tribes that he had harmed during his uh, expeditions all right as new lands were conquered many of them slowly began to claim war or independence against the main kingdom calling many colonies discovered to be converted into their own countries business began really moving booming all around the world as uh, people now had full, pretty much full knowledge of the world at that point. Like they could, eat, they could travel from Europe to America, to Asia, to India, and back to Europe. Uh, strong governments with systems of uh, human rights began flourishing. More businesses began booming. Governments began imposing strict limits and laws on business out of fear for 
out of remote competitions. Like I mentioned earlier in the presentation, the business world, especially in a universal sense, can be very unpredictable and sometimes cutthroat, excuse the term. And, uh, many, yeah, uh, many of these now independent countries develop their own prospect of movements to continue forming into the forcing nations they are today to end up with more and more businesses being built and managed in these countries, forming full blown economies and causing major changes in the world financially and economically, like we see today. As humans became more advanced in technology like never before, some began abusing it in ways that hindered the true nature of business into very flawed systems that could easily destroy businesses before they even started. Many business pioneers lost their minds due to the shift in employee availability and exploitable technology that caused a change in human ambition and, well, and willingness to work. It still holds a very much controversy as it becomes more advanced and more convenient for humans, sometimes leading to declines in manual business and lab labor, and sometimes like people can get addicted or too reliant or obsessed on it that they just start to disregard manual ways that could may or may not be more effective, all because we prefer things to be easier. And we are reached the present. As technology has reached a peak in human history, it is also becoming very increasingly advanced with a constant cycle of innovation told still turbulent from the late dark ages. Technology itself is becoming very convenient for humans, just about too convenient for humans as modern technology has been complicit in addictive or obsessive behaviors or personalities in teens and, and especially teens and young adults. Meanwhile, the practice of business itself becomes very sophisticated and domesticated to where almost everything is under strict scrutiny and control, pretty much beyond the true nature of business that, that, that we have uh, been used, that we have always known throughout the millennia of human existence. Meanwhile, we have discovered new eco-friendly tactics and technologies that has helped parts of the Earth come become greater since the 1980s, while other parts recklessly withered away due to pollution, war, and other detrimental human behaviors that, if not cold or resolved, could cause great catastrophe to the planet and disaster, and uh, perhaps we can end up polluting outer space or the galaxy or something if we're not careful enough. Now we're moving on to the potentials of business in the future. Business has infinite potential stated multiple times throughout the presentation for the near and far futures. Business can either create new biz new things or uh, recklessly destroy things. So much is still yet to be invented and there will always be so much to invent, even millions to billions of years from now. Consider so modern humans manage to survive that long. A lot of future invest inventions are currently being predicted through the likes of science fiction and uh, or a few other futuristic themed fantasy or fiction. The future of business is fickle in general general and uh, overall unpredictable. We could either attain a perfect utopian like society or end up destroying everything around us. We don't be able to tell what the future holds for humanity and human business and technology. Especially human made artificial intelligence, reflective of human capabilities and flaws themselves. AI for short. Business, business will always either be a tool of creation or that of destruction, no matter how advanced or uh, moral or capable we are. All right now that we're done with the history and futures of business, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell everyone about my own business project. It is a work in progress. I have been working on my own business project since I was almost 13 years old. It is known as the Wonderful World of Charlie and his Friends, or TWOC for short. It is a social justice-based organization that implements universal tactics, especially though mentioned in the business ABCs or the history of business, to defy conventional limits and reach a higher potential while being able to opt working practically anywhere. TWOC was founded while I was still attending Gompers Middle School in Lakewood, California, as an Instagram comedy skate series that sought to recruit more cast members during a very dire time by uh, starting a club at McBride High School in Long Beach, California. 
and due to liability reasons, ended up, ended up adapting into a club that opted to create custom comedy plays reflective off of the original comedy values that were implemented into the original skits. My friends in the original cast sooner or later approved of uh, this change in our and the project that we all have contributed to. Were were many many were, and were many of them even advised me on the way at least until other responsibility arise and I would have to work a little out of my respect for my beloved friends, which as I may have mentioned before, many I still see them alike family, especially because we all share a common ancestor. Of course, the project is a work in progress and would need more support before we can attain a full-blown launch. About the one for Charlie and his friends. I ended up leaving McBride High School due to some personal issues that traumatized me to this day. But even at that point, I had discovered too much about the universality of business and the infinite potentials of business to go back on the promises I made to all my friends and family. So I continued to walk and have, and I have even ideated countless plans for videos, music, podcasts, establishing various types of uh, extracurricular clubs that can be able to create their own content, host their own events, host their own fundraisers, appoint their own peoples, establishing a portfolio of businesses in an efficient way that can allow for the creation of various jobs specifically for those less fortunate to get a job and be able to earn a living for their families. I implemented more and more universal and versatile tactics and converted TWOC into the universal social justice organization that is, it is working to be today. Like I mentioned before, the, the project is a work in progress and it needs plenty of support. It still needs plenty of support. Like, like not to sound naive, but we're, a lot of the stuff like it's like past due for support. I also have various social media accounts for the wonderful world of Charlie's friends, including a a website, an Instagram, a Facebook, a Twitter, a Tumblr, a Patreon, a Discord server, a GoFundMe, a TikTok, and a merch shop, and a merchandise shop. I, I, I still, I, 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 in the near future, I plan on recruiting managers to manage all these social media sites, because even I got that's a lot of social media sites for a business that is not doing too much at the moment. All right, and now that every with, with all that out of the way, we're going to move on to our business activity. Today we are going to do a simple activity. We are all going to write on the whiteboards a bunch of our own business ideas, no matter how complex or outrageous they are. You are allowed to name a bunch of random business tactics you see in your own image. You can name a bunch of creative business ideas. You, you're allowed to be 100% creative with it as consistent with the values I implemented in my business project today. You are also allowed to write down descriptions or diagrams of any business or business ideas possible, even on paper. This is to also emphasize the unlimited possibilities for innovation and how business has been beneficial to humanity for millennia and how it continues and will continue to be beneficial to humans and human nature. Good luck. End of presentation business because it allows one to be more calm and focused and peaceful with the task at hand. When you are zen out, per se, you are typically in a state of a very vibrant calm that can allow one to have more clarity and free will when they continue for the sake of business. Being able to easily exalt one's plane of thinking towards a higher ambition or goal with an almost complete lack of ego that could hinder you from getting business done. Like being able to uh, be at a higher state of, of thinking is a, a concept very explored in modern times. Like there's this one rapper that even came up with a word for a, a higher state or a plane of thinking. The word is called get you, G E K Y U M E. Yeah, yeah. It, the definition of that means a higher state or a plane of thinking or a higher universe. Is described like a higher state of thinking. Okay. Being able to easily exalt one's plan of thinking towards a higher ambition or goal with an almost complete lack of ego that can hinder you from getting business done. 
being able to remain peaceful and tolerant with others allows you to be strengthened mentally and emotionally and can allow for better relationship amongst teammates and meditation and uh, colleagues. There are Zen related exercises such as yoga and meditation. Zen is, is important in business.